One of the most important shots in tennis, if not the serve, would be the return. Because the whole point of a tennis point is to get started by serving, and then you have to have somebody on the other side returning. Well, in this video, we're gonna show you the keys to making sure your return is rock solid. So you're not shanking, you're not taking too big of a swing, you're not doing any of the crazy stuff. We're gonna start from the ground up and show you everything you need to know, step by step, to make sure you have a great return of serve. So let's get started. Now, the number one thing I think that it takes to have a great return of serve is understanding this main core concept, which is, ground force, meaning that we want to use the ground to send our energy up through the ball. I think where most returners that have trouble returning have trouble is because they're thinking from their hands first. And I, I know it's kind of counterintuitive. It's like, but shouldn't I just focus on like my hands, my hands? But I think actually that should be the very last thing you should focus on. And I'll explain why in this video. The number one thing you got to understand is using the force from the ground to send the energy through the ball so your hands don't have to do anything. And when you do that properly, it's so much easier to hit the ball. So the very first thing you want to do is understanding how to jump. And you're like, what does jumping have to do with hitting return to serve, and I'll show you. If you can jump like this, what that means is basically you can take ground force and push it up. Now, the problem with this is we don't wanna push our force up, we wanna push our force forward. So what does that mean now? If we're loading our force this way and we're directing up, what we really need to make sure is we're loading our force on our outside leg, if it's a forehand, and push it forward. Or if it's a backhand, loading our force on our backhand leg and then pushing forward. This is how we can now take ground force and push it through the ball. After I go through all the major concepts, we're gonna come back around and do all the drills so you can do this at home. If you understand this now, the next thing, since we have the ground force behind us, literally, we wanna think about how do we prepare? And again, most players are thinking, okay, I gotta take the racket back, but I don't even want you thinking about taking the racket back just yet. If you're starting off in a solid ready position, whether you're doing a forehand or backhand, or one-handed backhand or two-handed backhand, making sure the racket's here. Now, I like this uh, the idea of that whatever your dominant side eye is the shot that you should be ready to hit, uh, kind of like, or prepared in. So mine is I'm right eye dominant, so I have my right-handed uh, forehand grip, where some players might be uh, left-hand dominant, and what you're gonna see is they're waiting in a backhand grip and they're prepared to flip onto their forehand uh, to hit a shot. So a way to find out which eye dominance you have is to be simply take the butt of the racket and look at the butt of the racket with both eyes. And I want you to take your hand, I'm gonna start with my uh, left eye and cover my right eye. Okay, so I'm gonna cover my right eye and when I look at the butt of the racket and cover my right eye, the racket moves. Now when I cover my left eye, the racket doesn't move. So my dominant eye is gonna be my right eye, so I'm gonna favor this on my forehand side. So I'm gonna wait here. Now that we know which what grip we should be waiting in, whether it be a forehand or a backhand, based on your personal eye dominance, what I think is really important to understand two things, the unit turn and the outside leg. So what I'm doing is by loading, I'm on my outside leg, but then I'm gonna do a simple unit turn, meaning turn my shoulders just a little bit. By just simply turning my shoulders just a little bit, guess what that does? It starts to prepare my racket. So now, with my racket, turned or my shoulders turned, I'm in a great position now if I want to drop my hands and then meet the ball, I'm ready to do that. And with that, if I use my outside leg and I push, I don't have to do that much swing. So what you're seeing right now is me coiling, creating separation. If you look at my hips facing this way and my shoulders facing this way, and then as I push, I'm going to uncoil those shoulders back into a natural position where they're forward and you can see what happens from here to here, I'm pushing through the ball. So that works on the forehand, but what about the backhand? If you're a two-handed backhand player and you go here, just by turning your shoulders, I haven't taken the racket back. I haven't taken the racket back here. I simply turn my shoulders. And again, I can drop the racket and meet the ball and uncoil. So I've created that separation here and then I'm uncoiling just with my shoulders. I haven't done anything with my hands. One-handed backhand player. I'm gonna use my left hand to get that unit turn here. And from here, again, I'm just gonna uncoil a little bit. Not as much as the two-handers where we're uncoil here. Just from here to here is all I need as a one-handed player. Now, from here, you can take all these strokes and basically do the exact same thing. Ball comes, outside step, I'm pushing through. Now, the last two key elements is gonna be timing and the racket face. So what we wanna do is when we see our opponent going up to hit the ball, and right when they're about to hit the ball, we wanna be in the air at contact, so we're coming down and just selecting where to go. You'll see a lot of professional players, because they pick up on clues, they kinda of come down and go in a direction. I don't recommend this unless you're a high-level player. 
until you got the knack of picking down because you hate to guess one way and the ball is going another way. So that's not going to work for you. But as far as timing, just get used to coming down on both feet and then making the selection with your outside leg. Meaning if it's my backhand, I'm going this way. Now the last thing we want to focus on is the racket face. Making sure that the racket face is going to be pointing in the direction you want to hit the ball. And that's it. Now you understand I, I didn't talk any about moving my hands back. Because basically if I take a short swing with my hands here, all I need to do go from here is drop the racket and get it to match up with the ball as I uncoil. Same thing on the back end. Drop the racket, get it to uncoil. So now let's do some drills to really start honing in on your return. And the great thing about these drills I'm going to show you is you can use a ball machine. So you don't have to go out with someone else to do it. But if you have somebody else serving to you, it does help. So the very first drill we want to do is work on making sure that you're just doing a shoulder turn. One of the biggest mistakes again is players are taking these huge swings and they don't have time to handle big serves. Obviously if the ball's slower, then you do have time to take a bigger swing. But if it's not, then we want to make sure our swing's really short. So when I'm going to use the ball machine really quick, it's just start in a ready position just like this, split step, and it might be a little harder sometimes when a ball machine is irregular, like I've been waiting for this one, it's like you get a ball and you have to wait a second. But even if you don't split step, just focus on the shoulder turn and then what I call the touch. So think shoulder turn and touch. If you're doing your two-handed back end or one-handed back end, shoulder turn, touch. One-handed back end, shoulder turn, touch. We're not swinging through the ball. All I want to do is practice on making sure I don't take a big swing and I'm getting the racket slightly below the ball and touching the ball. The thing that you've got to understand, especially about a first serve return, is that you're mainly in a defensive position because you don't know where the ball is coming, you don't know how much spins on it, you don't know um, uh, what they're doing with the ball, what type of serve. And so because of that, we just need to get the ball back. So we need to make sure that we can get under the ball so we can swing up to it. And this is why this drill is so great. And it's really simple and you can do it with the ball machine. And this is awesome because hence you can start working your return to serve anytime, anywhere, as long as you have access to a ball machine. So right here, as I'm waiting for the ball machine, I'm just going to start practicing turn and touch. And again, there's going to be this like want to hit the ball like hard, but you don't want to do it. Turn, touch. And all I'm going to do is meet the ball. Okay, turn, touch, okay, turn, touch. And notice how I'm not taking my full swing here and trying to hit the ball. All I'm doing is turn, touch, okay, turn, touch. We'll do a couple on the back, backhand side. I'm going to scoot over, turn, touch. That was a little too hard of a touch. So I want to go turn, touch, good. And then on my one-handed backhand, turn, touch making sure that as I turn, I'm coming up to the ball to touch. This is the first drill that can really start cementing this idea of short swings and using the paces on the ball. You don't have to create all the pace. And that's why we're doing turn, touch, not turn, swing. If we start swinging, we're going to get in the habit of trying to add too much. And so you've got a lot of pace coming towards you and they're going to add too much with it. The next drill is about using our legs because this is going to be the source of power or the source of stability to get the ball back. Because we've got to think, your uh, opponent's going to serve the ball, putting force on the ball. And we don't want to add a lot with the swing, but we need stability to make sure we can deal with the amount of pace that's on the ball if there's a lot of pace. And that's going to come from the legs. And so just like we've been going turn, touch, what I want you to start doing is when you're about to touch the ball, you're going to push forward with your legs. This move is if I'm hitting a forehand, I'm going to load my outside leg and push forward, meaning I'm trying to push in the direction I'm hitting the ball. Okay. If I get pulled out wide, I might have to go and cut it off a little bit because I'm trying to get as much force forward uh, as I can. And then on the backhand side, I'm using the opposite leg. So I'm going turn, push. I'm going to touch and let the racket go through a little bit, but most of the energy is going to come from my legs. So I want you to understand that even as you see the ball potentially going over the net, I'm not trying to swing big. I'm trying to make sure I utilize my legs to provide that power. So I'm getting ready here and I'm going to load my legs when I turn. So now when the ball comes out, I'll turn and push with my legs. So turn, push. You can see already there's more energy on the ball. Turn, push. Okay. Not a big swing. Waiting for the ball machine, turn, push, okay? And also what I notice now, I have some top spin on the ball, which gives me some control, push, okay? When the ball is coming. So you can see how I'm really push, but I'm not doing this. Turn, swing, okay? It's just turn, push, making sure I'm coming up on the ball. On the backhand side, turn, push, woo. Having a two-hander, turn, 
push, yes? Gotta encourage myself, turn, push, okay? One handed backhand, turn, so that ball's lower, push. And even like that came into my body, I still loaded my leg and pushed out. Now obviously you wouldn't be returning from this position, but I don't wanna move the ball machine right now. So, same thing can happen, boom. But the key is that I'm really trying to get my legs involved, coil and push through the ball. Now, you can start stepping this up, and if pretend you get a second serve and you're scooting inside the court more, you can exaggerate everything. So I'm gonna turn, really push, and drive out through the ball more, and then I can work on attacking the second serve. Turn, get under, okay? Turn, get under, and I'm really focusing on everything's the same. The only difference is I'm attacking the second serve by pushing and loading and extending more. Same thing on the two-handed backhand or one-handed backhand. I'm gonna turn, load, wait, push. So I'm really trying to load, push. The key is I'm getting my racket under the bounce so I can swing up. So even like that, I'll get any even if it goes high because I'm under the ball swinging up and these are the keys. And now you can start just revving it up, basically doing the exact same thing and going after it. Now the one other element that you do need a partner to help you with is when they're serving, making sure that we have the right timing of landing so when we land, we can come out, turn, and push. And the identification of the ball. One quick tip is when I think your opponent's going through the service motion, you need to be watching the ball. It'll start giving you clues on what your opponent might do. If they're tossing in a certain location, let's say like a kick and the ball starts going behind them, you can start anticipating a little bit that they might kick the ball. And the ball's gonna bounce higher, so you need to start scooting in. If the toss is more, let's say, over the shoulder, it might be a slice or flat. I mean, you need to probably get lower because this ball's not gonna come up and probably not scoot in. All these clues can be identified by watching the ball the entire time. Now, obviously you know how important the return is, but the serve is equally important and understanding which phase of play you're in. This is the start phase. So meaning I'm not trying to attack or hurt my opponent in a way that I'm trying to finish the point, if I'm trying to hurt my opponent and I get an opportunity because it's a second serve, then I'm trying to push them to give me a ball that I can finish. But you gotta know all these different phases of the court. If you do, you'll understand and have a clear idea of what you should do in each phase, and that's what you'll learn in this video.